Stop right there because I've got some incredibly exciting news to share with you today. News that's been spreading like wildfire. You know those moments when the pressure is intense, and the stakes are high? Well, word is getting around, and it's not just any talk. People are buzzing about how you recently faced a challenge with such maturity that it's making them take a second look and reconsider their own perspectives. Picture this, a stormy sea of opinions, with each wave crashing and every gust of wind trying to throw you off course. But through it all, you remain steady, calm, and laser-focused. People are finally starting to see the truth beneath the surface, and it's having a huge impact. Stick with me because I'm about to take you through all the details of this situation, explain how it unfolded, and why this newfound recognition is so pivotal. Trust me, you don't want to miss this journey from doubt to undeniable clarity. Ready to discover why everyone's buzzing? Let's dive in. Right from the start, I'm picking up that a lot of people are obsessing over you, constantly thinking about you. It seems like you're going through a major transformation, and people can't quite figure out what's happening with you. Whether you're in hermit mode or simply living your life, something in your energy has shifted, and everyone's noticing. For many of you, this change may have been sparked by a move or a major shift that's elevated your vibration. You might also be focusing on manifesting your desires and releasing anything that no longer serves you. Despite these positive shifts, there are still people from your past who may want to reconnect. While some might have good intentions, be mindful of someone reaching out just to prove a point, especially if you're still feeling emotional about them. Remember, we're focused on new beginnings and the exciting things ahead, but that doesn't mean the energy of people from the past is completely gone. Some may be wondering if your paths will cross again. Even as you move forward and embrace positive changes, you could still feel intense energy lingering from these past connections, which might leave you feeling drained or exhausted as you detox from old ties. Give yourself the space and rest you need. Things will start moving forward soon. If you're feeling stuck, especially with the energy of the Eight of Wands reversed, know that any delays are for your highest good. Divine timing is at play, and sometimes the pieces need to align in the bigger picture before progress can happen. Certain people or situations are still catching up with the divine plan, but you're setting the stage for your soul tribe and those meant to walk this journey with you. There's definitely someone who's thinking about you constantly, perhaps even obsessing over you more than anyone else. Even though it might feel like things are moving slowly or not progressing as fast as you'd like, you're actually on the right track. From an outside perspective, you're doing a fantastic job and steadily working toward your goals. Though you may be putting on a brave face, much like in Ariana Grande's song, Fake a Smile, it's okay to admit if you're feeling overwhelmed or drained. It's important to recognize that you're doing your best. Someone from your past, possibly an ex or someone you've distanced yourself from, is feeling deep regret over how they treated you. They're reflecting on their behavior and realizing they didn't show up as their best self in your relationship. Now, this person is obsessing over you, remorseful and recognizing that their actions weren't worth losing you. While they may have been focused on winning or achieving something at the time, they now understand it wasn't worth the cost of your connection. As you move forward with new beginnings and relationships, this person is coming to terms with their mistakes, realizing the value of what they lost and knowing they can't undo the past. You're truly moving on, and this shift has made certain people especially one particular person realize that it's really over. The way you handled a recent situation was different from how you might have responded in the past, signaling that you're entering a new chapter in your life. Your growth is evident, and those around you can see you're no longer playing by the old rules. A line from a song comes to mind that perfectly captures this transformation. I don't understand it, you're changing. Your change is noticeable, and it's having a significant impact. For some, this may involve new connections or opportunities, but even if these haven't fully arrived yet, don't worry. You've stopped engaging in the toxic dynamics and mind games that used to weigh you down. You've chosen to shine your light and trust that better people and opportunities are on their way. This new version of you is making others especially the one who didn't treat you right realize that you're not coming back. They might have expected you to return, given how you always did before or because of the bond you shared. But your decision to move on is a victory for you, proving that they offered nothing worth holding on to. 
Now, they're reflecting on their actions and understanding that they didn't give you what you deserved. This person may be thinking, why would they come back to me after how I acted? Even though you're not interested in revisiting the past, they're trying to make a return, realizing they need to bring a significant offer or prove they've changed. They now understand that you deserve better, and they see that you can easily find it elsewhere, something they weren't able to give you. In the past, they might have tried to bring you down or make you feel unworthy, but you're standing strong, represented by the energy of the Queen of Swords. Your ability to remain unaffected by their past behavior shows you're in a much stronger position now. Whether these old influences still linger or you're facing them in different ways, you've transformed your energy. You've set firm boundaries and shown you won't tolerate mistreatment anymore. This person senses the shift in you and realizes they can no longer get the same response from you. Someone from your past, who used to rely on you or frequently ask for favors, now sees that you've drawn clear lines and aren't accommodating them anymore. They're coming to terms with the fact that they no longer have anything to offer you, as shown by the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. They recognize that all they brought into your life was conflict, making it clear why you wouldn't want to return to that cycle. They're finally seeing that things between you have truly ended. Meanwhile, there's also a strong sense that new love or new connections are either already entering your life or are just around the corner. This person is likely aware of the new opportunities you have and can see others competing for your time and attention. They may have thought they could win you back with mind games, but you've shown up as the Queen or King of Swords, using your intelligence and intuition to rise above. You have a natural ability to detach from situations and people when needed, even if it's difficult, and that gift of detachment is serving you well. As you outgrow old conflicts and negative influences, your actions are signaling to the universe that you're ready for something better. There's also some gossip surrounding you. People are talking about how you don't seem interested in spending time with them anymore, or that you've distanced yourself from certain groups. It's almost amusing, because while they say you've lost interest, the truth is you've simply chosen to focus on what really matters to you. There seems to have been a group of people who thrived on drama and conflict, and you made the conscious decision to walk away. Some may try to paint you as the source of drama, just because you set clear boundaries and removed yourself from toxic environments. However, by doing so, you've shown that you're serious about your well-being and growth. People are noticing that you're genuinely following your heart, making decisions that align with your true self. This shift is inspiring others. When you commit to something, you follow through with determination and integrity, something people rarely see, and they're taking note of it. You're known for being genuine and straightforward, which really sets you apart from others who might not be as authentic. It seems people are noticing that you've distanced yourself from someone you once cared about, and they see this as a powerful move, one that shows you're prioritizing your own well-being, even if it meant letting go of something or someone you loved. This choice reflects your commitment to your higher good and could be part of a significant spiritual or personal lesson for both you and the other person involved. You may have encountered a soulmate connection that, rather than supporting you, brought more challenges into your life. This connection might have been confusing or even unhelpful, and you've come to realize it wasn't giving you the mutual support you needed. You've learned to remove these obstacles, and now you're blossoming into a new version of yourself. Even if you're in a transitional phase and haven't yet seen the new opportunities coming your way, trust that exciting things are on the horizon. Seeing 1111 signals that new doors are opening for you, guided by your angels. You've completed a cycle, and new, meaningful connections are on the horizon. Whether it's a romantic proposal or a career opportunity, something significant is approaching. Your energy of positivity and determination is attracting these experiences. You may have a secret admirer, someone genuine yet hesitant, possibly an air or water sign. They might reach out soon, offering not only romance but connections that could also support your career goals. Embrace these changes and stay open to what's coming. Continue to focus on new opportunities and connections, even if there are still some lingering ties to the past. By remaining open to new experiences and actively seeking them out, you'll continue to attract positive changes and personal growth. While the past may try to reach out, your dedication to moving forward will help you stay on course and welcome fresh blessings into your life. You're exuding an energy of finality, 
clearly indicating that you are truly done with certain past connections. This firm stance is noticeable to someone from your past, who can sense that you're moving on to new and potentially better things. Their awareness of your growth may lead them to act out or attempt to provoke you, especially since they've heard through mutual connections about the new opportunities and people you're attracting, those who offer more than they ever could. This past individual might be going through a significant upheaval or a tower moment, which could explain why their energy feels so intense or disruptive. Even if you don't care much about their struggles, you might still feel the lingering effects of their emotional turmoil. Your focus is now on your new path and future opportunities, showcasing remarkable maturity and grace in handling past situations. You've diffused conflicts and transformed chaos into peace, demonstrating your strength as a light worker and healer. Your calm, high vibrational approach to negativity has surprised many, whether in personal relationships or professional settings. By addressing issues with kindness, assertiveness, and emotional intelligence, you maintain your boundaries while offering support and understanding, making a profound impact on those around you. Your ability to navigate challenges with poise truly sets you apart. Your balanced approach, integrating both masculine and feminine qualities as needed, has enabled you to navigate challenges effectively. When faced with attempts to provoke or challenge you, you've responded with grace and maturity, showcasing your strength and resilience. This ability to manage difficult situations calmly is a testament to your growth and divine guidance, reinforcing that you're well prepared to handle any obstacles that come your way. Recently, you've dealt with a situation with remarkable maturity, surprising those around you. Instead of reacting impulsively or falling back into old habits, you chose to respond in a way that highlighted your growth and self-control. Your angels are proud of how you've handled this, especially since others expected you to react differently based on past gossip or misjudgments about you. Someone from your past may have tried to provoke you or set you up to react in a way that would undermine your credibility. They might have hoped to portray you as out of character or evade responsibility for their own actions. However, you didn't take the bait. Instead, you chose to walk away and handle the situation gracefully. Even when given the chance to be petty or seek revenge, you opted to rise above it, focusing on forgiveness instead of holding on to resentment. Your capacity to forgive while maintaining your boundaries demonstrates true strength. You recognize that holding on to anger or seeking revenge ultimately harms you. Even if someone has wronged you, you can still wish them well and move on instead of fueling conflict. This mindset proves that you are not easily swayed or influenced by others' attempts to provoke you. The dynamics have shifted, and it's evident that you are not the toxic one in this situation. Those who try to stir up trouble or embarrass you are now the ones revealing their true selves. For example, a former lover or friend who once claimed to be indifferent is now reaching out, showing that they still care. People are beginning to notice that despite their attempts to paint you as the problem, it's actually them who are trying to reconnect or instigate issues. Your calm and composed responses have allowed others to see that you were not the source of the conflict. Instead, it's the toxic individuals from your past who are now attempting to make excuses or create drama. By staying true to yourself and handling the situation with integrity, you've exposed their true nature and highlighted your own growth and strength. Despite their obsessive scrutiny, this person is now gaining a new perspective. They had always envisioned a long-term future with you but didn't foresee the extent of your growth and transformation. Your ability to confront them in a way no one else had, particularly when they were accustomed to people enabling their behavior, has taken them by surprise. Your strong reaction to their actions not only put them in their place, but also allowed others to witness your maturity and strength. This has left them feeling unsettled, prompting them to enter a reflective, hermit-like state as they realize how foolishly they managed the connection with you. They underestimated your capacity to walk away and handle the situation with grace. Others have observed how you navigate tough situations and emerge stronger, leading to a shift in their perceptions. If you faced conflicts with colleagues or others, your remarkable maturity has been evident, and eventually, the truth about those situations will come to light. People are beginning to understand why you reacted the way you did, and some are acknowledging that they were the issue all along. As you continue to move forward, your good karma is beginning to manifest. 
People from your past who may have wronged you are now beginning to learn their lessons and witness your success. Your former love interest, in particular, is starting to feel regret for their actions and realizing that they pushed you too far. While this doesn't automatically make them a better person, they are at least acknowledging their behavior and taking some responsibility. You might hear from them, expressing their recognition of their faults and working on their personal issues. However, you're focused on moving forward to embrace new experiences and opportunities. The energies are shifting, and as you continue to grow and evolve, you will find joy and success on new paths. What are you right now? What are you fighting? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting against? We're broken people living in a broken world, which means we're all fighting something. It's just how life works until heaven. For some of you, maybe it's fighting for freedom from things like anxiety, depression, insecurity, loneliness, and self-doubt. For others, maybe you're fighting for a loved one, praying for them to experience freedom, to find Jesus, to experience life change. Some of you might be praying about starting a family, while others are battling to keep one intact, whether it's fighting for your marriage, a dream, or against a difficult diagnosis. Life can be challenging, and it's easy to feel worn out. Sometimes, we get disheartened, frustrated, and tempted to give up, even if only for a little while. We might think, I'm just done. I'm done praying because nothing seems to change. I'm done trusting God because it doesn't feel like He's listening. I'm done believing that He has a plan for me. I'm done trying to obey, to give, to serve, to show up, to invite people to church, to share my faith, my story, or to make a difference in this world. Nothing seems to be going my way. I'm done. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Paul addressed similar feelings when he wrote to Timothy. Timothy was struggling, feeling overwhelmed and ready to give up. Paul's message to him was clear, stop it. You weren't given a spirit of fear or timidity. The term Paul used actually refers to cowardice. He was telling Timothy, stop acting like a coward. God has equipped you with a fighter's spirit. You have been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. To fully experience the plans that God has for you, you need to take a step similar to what I've done. It begins with this, you must fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. So, Timothy, you need to fight the fight too. It won't be easy, but you're capable of it. Fight the fight and finish the race. Paul added, I have fought the fight, and I have finished the race. Understand this, because there is opposition and because you're human, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But you have the choice to persevere. Many people start strong, but only a few follow through to the end. If you want to embrace all that God has for you, you need to resolve. I know I'll face challenges because I have a warrior spirit within me. I can't control the obstacles that come my way, but I can control whether I give up. I am committed to finishing this race. Remember, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. You can't give up. You need to stay the course. The faithful actions we take, even the small, Consistent steps over time, have a profound impact. Being diligent in the little things may seem minor, but it's actually a significant part of the journey. Each day, we're in a battle, sometimes just a battle to maintain our sanity. But you must keep fighting. Remember this, victory is always on the other side of a struggle. It's consistently found beyond the fight. As Galatians 6 verse 9 puts it, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's natural to feel tempted to quit when faced with setbacks or exhaustion, especially when it seems like your efforts go unrecognized or unappreciated. But don't let weariness stop you. Keep pushing forward, even when it's tough, because the reward is always worth the fight. But we persevere because it's the right thing to do. In Galatians 5 verse 7, the Apostle Paul asked the church, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? If the devil can get you discouraged and keep you in that state, he can prevent you from continuing. That's the real challenge. Theodore Roosevelt once said, Courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have the strength. 
Even when you feel you don't have the energy to continue, you must keep moving forward. How many times have you told yourself or others, I'm done. I can't keep going. It's easy to become disheartened when things don't progress as quickly as we'd like. But it's crucial to push through, even when the road seems long and challenging. Stay strong and don't lose heart in doing good, because in time, you will reap the rewards if you don't give up. There is a promise of a harvest. So, keep your faith and stay committed. Remember those times when you were absolutely certain that your vision for your life was going to come to fruition. You were unstoppable, determined that nothing or no one would deter you from achieving your goals. It felt like it was already within your grasp. But what happened to that certainty? The Bible reflects this sentiment with a question, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom is the vision I want to live by. Stand firm in this conviction and don't let yourself be burdened again by the weight of old constraints. The message is clear, you were doing so well. Remember who or what caused you to stray from the truth. What changed? This kind of influence doesn't come from the one who called you. You were on the right path, had a clear vision, but then real life intervened. As the famous quote by Mike Tyson goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This quote, from an interview before his fight with Evander Holyfield, is a powerful reminder that adversity is a part of life. The interviewer noted that this insight applies far beyond boxing, to any area of life, whether it's health issues, job losses, poor investments, or everyday frustrations. What truly matters is how you respond to these challenges, not the challenges themselves. We all want to feel like we're making progress, doing well, and making a difference. We want to sense that we're moving forward, having an impact, and making strides. That's a natural desire, and it's important to keep that perspective alive as you navigate life's ups and downs. So, what happens next? Life throws its punches. I've mentioned Mike Tyson's quote so many times, including just yesterday during a chat with friends. I said, Mike Tyson's line about fighting resonates so well, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. It's a perfect analogy for life, isn't it? We all have grand plans, but then life hits us hard, and suddenly we're faced with, well, that wasn't part of the plan. What do I do now? In those moments, it's easy to feel like everything is falling apart and consider giving up. But if you look at anyone who has achieved something significant or is pursuing a meaningful goal, you'll find they've all faced their share of setbacks and challenges. The common thread among those who accomplish great things and live abundant lives is their resilience. They all experienced difficulties and were punched in the mouth by life, but they didn't let those setbacks stop them. Instead, they persevered through adversity and kept moving forward. Here's what you won't find on the list of keys to success. A life free of challenges, a perfectly rigid plan that always went as expected without needing any flexibility or adaptation. Does anyone actually achieve success this way? Does anyone succeed by making excuses, blaming others, and playing the victim while rarely following through on their commitments? Is anyone's story about everyone in their life always agreeing with them and supporting them without exception? Or is it about achieving everything solo, without any help? No one who lives a significant life has avoided the walls of reality, where things don't go as planned, and they had to adjust their strategies. Everyone has faced moments of disappointment and had to overcome blame and excuses. What sets apart those who achieve greatness and find true fulfillment from those who often feel empty is their perseverance. It's their determination to keep pushing forward, their grit to see things through, and their refusal to give up. This relentless drive and willingness to adapt and persist, despite obstacles, is what truly makes the difference between the average and the extraordinary. Pastor Craig often illustrates this with a powerful story about a donkey that fell into a pit. As people walked by and saw the situation, they decided that there was no way to rescue the donkey, so they thought, let's just bury him and make it quick. They started shoveling dirt into the pit. Each time a shovelful of dirt landed on the donkey, he would shake it off and step up. More dirt came, and he shook it off and stepped up again. It might have been the 1,000th or 10,000th shovelful, but eventually, the pit became shallower and shallower until the donkey was able to walk out. 
This story shows the importance of resilience. No matter how tough things get, whether you're facing financial troubles, health issues, or family problems, you need to shake it off and keep moving forward. It's not the time to quit or complain. Even when you're down, remember that we serve a God who specializes in comebacks. Quitting is easy, and that's why many people do it. But you are not one of those people. Micah 7 verse 8 reminds us, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. You might get knocked down, but it's not the end. God will never declare it's over until you win. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, A righteous man falls seven times but rises again. To overcome the devil, you only need to get up one more time than you've been knocked down. Keep getting up and never quit. The pain of giving up and the regret that follows is far greater than the pain of perseverance. God promises rewards for those who endure. The key is to keep showing up. You cannot keep a person down who refuses to stay down. It's one thing to be knocked down, but the real challenge is to refuse to remain down. There are people here who can testify that, although they've been knocked down, God continually provides the strength, energy, and power to get back up. Every time something or someone has brought them down, God has lifted them up again. Life isn't about avoiding being a knocked down, it's about refusing to stay down. You've come too far to give up now. You need to keep fighting because, in His name, there is nothing you can't overcome. If you're feeling like giving up, I understand that temptation, but don't do it. Remember, God is on your side, just as He told Peter He was praying for him so that his faith would remain strong. Let God be your source of encouragement. He is in your corner, and with His support, you will emerge victorious. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, You are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, 
a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the one who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, 
to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then. I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape, where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. 
These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. The story of David and Goliath, as told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45, serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith. And in periods of turmoil, he grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide. His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us. And as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question. It's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we are always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. 
When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, the journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability, reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, He is for us, and through Him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. 
Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When He commits to being by our side, He means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that He is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, His unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promises is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord. He will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering His strength, His love, and His unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to Him, draw from His infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with Him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for He will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. I acknowledge your greatness your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord, I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, Victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. 
I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace, and may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.